Keller. All right, 20 minutes after 9 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, I'm not a runner, but I have volunteered for some of these 5K runs. Uh-huh. I am not going to tell you about a 5K run. In case you're confused, Robin, because I know you know what the topic is. But I was thinking about the 5K run that I did volunteer to participate in because it went something like this. Uh, There was about 300 people there. And uh, all of a sudden, there was 499 people way up there. Well, 498 because you were with me. (laughs) There was 498 people up there and two people way back here. And those two people were you and I. And the only mm-hmm. reason you were there is because I was there, because I couldn't keep up, and you just felt bad for me, so you stayed with me. <laughs> well, that's kind of the way it is with technology. I, I feel like I'm always like the last one to find out anything about technology, so there's my metaphor. Uh, I went to your house, and we were going to watch the movie, what was it called again? The, what did we see, that movie? Avatar. Avatar. All right. Yeah. So we couldn't find it on your Netflix, so I bought it from my Amazon. <laughs> yes. Okay. Which was kind of cool. <laughs> there it was. Just pay the money. Bingo. There it is. Yeah, right. Okay. I know Dan's disappointed because he downloaded it from me, but that's how we did it. So now I get these advertisements for these smart remote controls for your TV. Yeah. Because somehow Amazon <laughs> knows I watched my movie on your TV, and hey, did you know we make a remote control for that TV that you talk to? Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. Isn't that weird? We're 15 miles apart, and it's like, I don't know. it's got my TV pegged. Uh, Michael, Michael Biltz <laughs> is the managing director of Accenture Technology Vision. He's telling us some of these things, so maybe we can catch up with the 498 people in front of us, Robin. Good morning, <laughs> Michael. Thank you for taking your time and for being patient with me as I did that long intro. Good morning, sir. <laughs> Good morning. Thanks for having me. Where are you right now? I'm sitting in San Francisco. Oh, if you're in San Francisco with this topic, you're you're not 490. You're you're ahead of the 498 people. You're even ahead of the people who are I, ahead I of probably, me. Probably. I'm probably a little bit ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for being on the air with us today. So, uh, my gosh, I am I am a geek in, at heart. So I love this technology stuff. What 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 can I expect to see in the future? I think that where you actually started with your intro is a really good starting place, is that one of the things that we have seen from technology is that there has been a huge shift where it's not people who are being required all the time to adapt to the technology, but rather the technology is actually adapting to people. Is that when you start to see artificial intelligence and analytics come to fi- come to pass, is that what it's doing is it's making our application smarter. So it's doing things like using your history to try to predict what products that you want. It's oh. using things like your Spotify application that says, I'm not just going to make you be your own DJ. You know, I'm going to help introduce you to new music. And so it's going to make it easier for us to use all this technology that's suddenly coming out. Isn't that amazing? I, you know, Speaking of the music world, I, I'm so amazed by that thing they call the music genome where you can put in, let's say, uh, your favorite artist, and it'll find all these other artists that are just like them, even people I've never heard of. It's just Mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah, no, and the crazy fun thing about that is that you get to do new things when you have things like that exist. You know, one of the things that I like, you know, about apps like the music genomes is that not only you know does it map out all the stuff for you it can actually start to take you on musical journeys you know so think about it is is that it's not just your genome of music out there it's everybody's and so you start to find people who have similar taste to you and it can actually give you you know recommendations that says well, you don't listen to this, but most people who are like you do, and it actually can start to evolve your music taste and introduce you to things that you would have never, ever looked at before. I, I love that. I, I love being introduced to this stuff. My son took me to uh, Radio City Music Hall to see Sigur Ross from Iceland, and I guess that's like one of the newest, uh, hippest groups. I don't know, but they were really awesome. And I, And, you know, as an older guy... You know, you might have thought, somebody outside of myself might have thought, hey, you're not going to like that. That's the new kid stuff. But I really did like it. So I, I, I hope that kind of stuff is, is uh, I hope what I'm saying is reflective of everybody. That's what I'm saying. I don't know. 
but anyway. No, and, and I think it really is, and I think that's the power, you know, of what we're really seeing happening from a tech perspective is that it's giving us more access to things that we've never done before, and it's giving us more capability to control our lives by making things easier. You know, I've got a, a fun, easy example that says, have you ever had a parking ticket that you didn't feel like you should have gotten? Oh, yeah. Okay. So there is a new robot, robo-lawyer, and so it's essentially a chatbot that you type in on the internet that you can explain the situation to really? or where you got this undeserved parking ticket, and it will help you contest it. Really? Wow. Now, does, yes. Does it sometimes tell you, yeah. you you're, I'm sorry, you're out of luck, you, did the, you, you made a mistake, does it tell you that? I'm sure it does, <laughs> you know, but, you know, you know, but 60 percent of the time it's able to get people off, you know, and obviously the people who are objecting are the people who, you know, the sign was covered right. or for oh, whatever right. reason that they don't think they should have got it, you know, but there's 200,000 people who've now used an AI robot that they just type oh. to in oh. order to, what you know, doing? go ahead and bypass the government system. All right. Just can you quickly tell me how I get to that one? Is there a website? Well, how do I do that one? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's it, yeah, it's called Do Not Pay. Do <laughs> all right. <laughs> uh, when uh, uh, artificial intelligence seems to be really helpful to people in in uh, com in uh, businesses, uh, even your home life, but is it a hand? Is artificial intelligence a hindrance to the children that are growing up? Does it curb them from? having them dig deep for the answers to questions to satisfy their own per own curiosity when it's so easy to ask Alexa or something, uh, what is the answer to this? I, I think it's teaching them to think differently than us. And, and I don't know that it's necessarily a good thing or a bad thing, you know, but I, I liken it back to, and, and maybe you'll appreciate this, is the, you know, back, way back in the day, you know, when you start thinking about Aristotle and Plato, way ancient times, is that they used to complain that people wouldn't have to think anymore once they were able to write things down. And so it was the death of how, <laughs> you know, oh. kids think. That's funny, yeah. Wow. And so, we're, yeah, but, so we're really just going through this all over again that says, yeah, are kids going to think differently? They are, because everything's at their fingertips. But that doesn't mean that it's bad or wrong. It's really just going to be different. That is interesting, yeah. Well, I, th and the one thing, I, I, I guess when we were kids, we'd go to the library, and if you're looking up one thing, in the course of getting there, you find other things that maybe distract you or are as interesting to you. W same thing with Google. I guess if you look up something, you might find something else. But I think with like Alexa, it's almost like that's the exact answer. You, you've got it. Here's the answer. I'm sorry. There's no arguing. Exactly. <laughs> it's, it's, it's weird. Um, yeah, in fact, the, Alexa, no, 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 no. Alexa even told us that ramen noodles is pronounced ramen and not ramen. And that it's often it's it, and that it's often used in jails as a form of currency. That's right. <laughs> now who knew that? <laughs> yeah. Well, no, nobody's saying that these things are going to be perfect. And I and I tell you that you know what you've hit on um, is I'm. Um, is one of the new things that we're all dealing with. I mean, and look around, it's this idea of misinformation. You know, it used to be that when you only had a couple sources of information, you know, most people did a better job of making sure that whatever's in your textbooks, you know, for example, is right. But now that you've got all information, you know, we don't quite have it set to say, well, how do I make sure what I'm hearing is right? <laughs> yeah. Well, I love this topic, and uh, thank you for sharing what you know about it. Um, uh, do you have a website you can send us to using technology here? Sure. So, yeah, go to www.accenture.com. That's A C C E N T U R E uh, forward slash technology vision. Okay. Accenture.com slash technology vision. Uh, thank you. Thank you. That was fun. Thank you, Michael. Happy to be here. All right. We will be right back. News Radio, I'm Karen McHugh. Democrats came up short in two special congressional elections Tuesday in South Carolina and Georgia. Democrats' hopes of winning back congressional seats in special elections have faded as Republican Karen